All right. So first things first, we're going to be talking about the new casting news coming out of the Batman camp. So as we all know, Matt Reeves, director and writer Matt Reeves from the Planet of the Ape remakes is doing the new Batman movie starring uh, Robert Pattison. So we affectionately call these movies the Pattison uh, films. Hmm. And uh, we've got a, a lot of casting news this week. So uh, I just want to go over this and then get your guys' thoughts on um, you know the, the casting stuff. So of course we have Robert Pattison as Batman, but we have Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon. So this is obviously not tied to any of the Justice League stuff that came before it, um, obviously, because we had J.K. Simmons playing a very different uh, Commissioner Gordon in that. And then uh, we have the big announcement was Zoe Kravitz, Lenny Kravitz's daughter, playing Catwoman in the movie. And yesterday we got news that Paul Dano is cast as the Riddler, formerly speculated that it was going to be a uh, Oh, uh, what's his name? The the fat kid from uh, Jonah Hill, who was dropped out due to uh, reportedly wanting too much. And in his place, they're talking to Seth Rogen, rumored to be anyway, speculatory. Yeah. So possibly as the penguin. Yeah. So all they got to do now is just get, uh, you know, James Franco and. <laughs> Yeah, Call it freaks and geeks and bats. There's been some rumors that um, Josh Gad has been uh, he's been pushing for it. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's been actively seeking it. But it's funny because uh, Paul Dano, he's an actor that I remember from uh, this movie called The Girl Next Door, which is a, a great film. It was made a long time ago, but it has some very interesting actors in it. Uh, Timothy Oliphant and um, what, what's the uh, I'm blanking on his name. The guy who played Mr. Fantastic in the Fanforstic movie. Uh, any of you guys remember who that is? That guy. Yeah. I just want to Google. <laughs> I know who he is, but I can't think of his name either. I'm horrible with names. So. Yeah, and it's, it's funny because he's been kind of an up and coming actor. And he was in this series I was actually going to talk about in one of our other news stories uh, called uh, Too Old to Die Young. And uh, let me just look him up real quick. While you're doing that, Dano isn't a bad choice, I guess. Zoe's not a bad choice. I mean, could get worse. Could get Seth Rogen as Penguin. <laughs> yeah, I, li I like this Dano guy. I remember him from Cowboys and Aliens. Um, and he he's got that kind of bit of craziness about him, hasn't he? I think, I think that could work, actually. So I'm, I'm willing to give him a shot. Yeah. Oh, this isn't the guy I was thinking of. Anyway, getting back to the cast. Yeah, um, Paul Dano, like he's been a lot of stuff. He was in uh, There Will Be Blood. Uh, he's, he's one of those guys who you might recognize his face, but you don't know his name. Mm. One of those like really solid character actors. Um, so ideally, I would have liked to have seen someone like, um, uh, oh, what's his name? The Doctor Who guy, David Tennant, play the Riddler. Um, yeah, I'll be interested. He'd be a little too old, though. I yeah, mean, I guess, I guess they were, they're, they're going for younger. They're doing Batman babies, let's face it. Yeah, Batman Year Zero type thing. <laughs> uh, but uh, I wanted to get your guys' take on the casting. So Commissioner Gordon, Catwoman, and uh, Riddler. Uh, Ruin, Mr. Johnson. Uh, yeah. Well, obviously, as the uh, world-famous director and uh, writer-director I am, Um yeah, I'm. Can I ignore Patterson for now? Because I've got major problems with that one. But the rest, I'm. I'm okay with. Um, I like this guy, Jeffrey Wright. Um, I. I thought he played a great part in um, the uh, Westworld uh, TV show. Uh, I think he's got good depth. He's he's a good character actor. So yeah, I'm I'm down with that. I, I'm I'm cool with that. Um, Zoe Kravitz. She's got a bit of pedigree, hasn't she, in various um, sort of comic book movies uh i've not seen yeah. a lot of her but yeah, i mean like she still hasn't done a whole lot she was in the fantastic beasts crimes of grindelwald film see uh, i know her more that her dad's famous that's yeah, yeah. her dad is musician lenny kravitz <laughs> of course yeah uh, seen she, him live he's really good hbo's um big little lies i guess i haven't seen that show but i mean she was okay and the stuff i've seen her in she's like, got like the eartha kit eyes and kind of face so i can kind of see why they went with her 
Yeah, I, I can I can go with that. And let's say um, this other guy they brought in that I've seen in Cowboys and Aliens. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm cool. I'm I'm cool for kind of breaking new ground. I know some of the other names that we we, we tossed about earlier. They just they've just been kind of done to death, and they're really. Um, you know, of obvious people to slot into the role. Um, but Patterson's the one I'm, you know, I'm a big Batman fan. And as soon as I heard about that, I was like, oh no, surely not. And I'm, <laughs> I'm not even tying this into the kind of baggage that comes with, you know, someone who's been in Twilight, but I just think he's a bad fit for the role. I don't think he's got the physicality. Um, he, he, yeah, he can bring a kind of moodiness or whatever, but I, uh, I'm, I'm going to struggle with that one. I'm not writing him off. I'll give the guy a chance, but I, I'm i disappointed, maybe more so than when uh, Affleck got, got the shout. But I don't know. When, when have we... I'm, I'm a Michael Keaton guy, and, and uh, you know, I thought um, the Christian Bale uh, Batman was, was a pretty good version. But other than that, I... I yeah, I, I struggle with the, the casting choices for Batman. So, no, interested to, to know what you guys think. Yeah, Stephen, what are your thoughts on the Batman casting? Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, kind of like what Bruin just said. It's like, I'm, I think I'm cool with the casting. Um, like, Jeffrey Wright is a really good actor. I like the, um, the work he's done, especially like in Westworld. I'm not too familiar with Zoe Kravitz. I know of her, but I haven't, I don't think I've seen her in anything. Um, but, you know, I'm more of like eh, another bad man. You know? <laughs> How <laughs> dare I'm, you? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get past that hurdle. You know, it's just like. Yeah, I'm surprised that they abandoned the, the whole Batfleck thing so quickly. Um, mm. You know, you know, because. I think that was more Ben's choice. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like we're getting so many Batman like reboots. That and I don't know. Did you hear that they couldn't? I don't, I don't think they could get him insured. Oh, because of his really? alcoholism. Yeah, between his alcoholism and all that other shit. Ben? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, he's still making movies, so like they... Yeah, but I mean, a big action movie like that where there's that much money on it, I'm sure the insurance has got to be off, uh, off the roof. I'm sure he's bonded. Mm. Well, that was the rumor that went around, but I mean, yeah. he pokes fun at it in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. So. They, they were able to get Robert Downey Jr., <laughs> You know, yeah, um, well, he was way clean by then too. That's the difference. Still, like that was a that was a big deal when R R D J got cast in the original Iron Man because he was basically uninsurable uh, in Hollywood. So, for people who don't understand how this works, like if you have a major actor in your movie as the star, uh, they have to be bonded, they have to be insured, so that if something happens to them and the movie doesn't get finished for whatever reason, uh, the studio is able to recoup some of that loss. So basically every A-list actor that you see in a movie, they have to go through a bonding and insurance process uh, before the movie can basically get going. Because otherwise, if something happens to them, the, the studio is just out all that money and, uh, you know, they have no way of, of, of getting it back. So it's basically a, a risk kind of uh, mitigation. Risk aversion, yeah. Risk aversion. Mm. And, and so when you have big, big name actors that have conditions or habits that put them at higher risk of not finishing a movie or something like that. Uh, it becomes harder to find insurance or, or bonding agencies. For this them. is famously what killed what's her face's career. Uh, the one from Herbie. Oh, uh, Lin Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay yes. Lohan. Yeah. Uh, because of her partying ways and, and alcoholism and stuff like that. Um, you know, she became a lot harder to insure. And uh, that definitely affected her ability to get certain types of roles. So that's one of those things uh, that uh, it's kind of inside baseball stuff. Not a lot of people think about it. Right. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, you know, overall. As far as, yeah. The other one, Paul Dano, I'm kind of surprised. He's, he kind of fits more of a Joker look almost. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least in this picture. Um, well, just in general, what I've seen, he kind of has more of that. Like, there's other guys I would have went to first for the Riddler. I mean, it's not a bad choice. But I, when I look at it, I, I picture more like he would have been like, oh, that would have been an, an, a little bit different way to go with the Joker. But maybe they're not going to have a Joker in this because of the whole just to kind of separate for a bit. Who knows? I haven't heard any talk of the Joker. I mean, I've heard all these other characters. But who would you look, have liked to have seen as the Riddler, Tom? Um, well, Jonah Hill wouldn't have been a horrible choice if you could have got him to slim down even more. Um, 
but I have a feeling they were poking at him for the, I, he was perfect for the penguin. Yeah. So, I mean, that made sense. Uh, cause Seth Rogen, I just don't see him as a penguin and, you know, he's going to go in there and just like, Hey, Batman, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you want to join? <laughs> no, no. I like, but, um, God, you know, the sad part is what's his ass who played Lex, uh, Jesse Eisenberg, Jesse Eisenberg was, should have been the Riddler to begin with. Yeah. Like that was, if you're going to put him in something that would have been like a perfect role for him. Otherwise, uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, who else would probably be good? Let me think about that for a minute while you ask somebody else. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you basically played the Riddler in the Batman vs. Pretty much. That's yeah. I'm I'm interested with you know that the choices that are being made for this film because it seems like every Batman movie that's made, uh, they always make questionable casting choices, and then once you see the movie, you're like, oh, okay. What's the name of the kid who plays Beast in the first class movies in X Men? Is a uh, that guy I, I know who you're talking about. Uh, he was a kid actor too and i can't think of his name he, he was in mad max yeah he'd be perfect for the riddler oh um he's another one of those guys whose faces that you recognize but i can't think of his name nicholas holt, nicholas holt yeah, yes nicholas thank holt. you yeah he'd be perfect yeah, he'd be a good riddler i thought that you know, it's funny. Patton Oswalt played the penguin in one of those. Uh, yeah, I just funny you said. I was funny, funny, funny or die, uh, <laughs> and he was actually really good in it. Yeah, yeah he, he wouldn't be a horrible choice. I'd pick him before Josh Gad. Yeah, we actually have this other article here that I'll show you guys. Uh, so um, you know, it says that Warner Brothers reportedly still looking for a penguin actor. And they kind of talk about Zoe Kravitz getting. Uh, um, cast in the role but uh deadline says that the next order of business for this movie is to cast who's going to play the penguin and i, I feel like this is one of those batman returns scenarios where th they're just putting in way too many villains yeah in the movie like maybe one or two at the most but you know with the riddler the penguin and catwoman i think that's kind of pushing things i wonder if it's going to be more of they're setting it up for down the road because so, miller or, or uh Miller, Jesus Christ. Reeves is one of those uh, that he he was really good about, even though Planet of the Apes 2 and 3 don't really connect as far as story-wise, he was really good with the characters. So I have a feeling, and setting up things for down the road in, in his third film. So I wonder if that's what a lot of this is, is some of these are just going to be throwaway cameos that will build up to stuff in the next two movies, because I think he signed on for a trilogy, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's doing a trilogy. Uh, according to this comicbook.com article, uh, Josh Gad, Jack Black, Nick Frost, and Andy Serkis have all been considered for the Penguin role. Hmm. So, Interesting choices. I know, right? Everyone, welcome, Proper Jeremy. To DJ. The hey, how is it? How is everyone? Proper Jeremy. What's up? Doing good. We're just talking about uh, the Batman casting news this week. Oh, you, lovely. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on on the casting news? So we got Paul Dano as the Riddler, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, and Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon. Um, I am very much in support of Zoe Kravitz uh, as Catwoman. Uh, I think she'll do a great job. Uh, I don't really know much about uh, Paul Dano or Jeffrey Wright or their, their careers, um, but I think that will work, you know, for me personally, because I don't have any preconceived uh, thoughts, specifically, you know, with Jonah Hill earlier. I just was like, ah, I don't know. I don't know about that. It works better for me when these uh, iconic uh, characters are portrayed by, you know, people who aren't as well known for, for me personally. Um, so I, I am uh, optimistic about this. Well, lucky for you, Jonah Hill's off the table, I guess. So. Oh yeah. I, I'm aware of that. That's why it was, it was somewhat of a, like, Oh, I don't know how this is going to work for me. Kind of like how <laughs> Jesse Eisenberg was for Lex Luthor. I'm like, I, I don't know. I won't you know tell I mean? him. I won't tell him who's rumored to be a bit on the table, though, then, because he'll freak. Oh, it's okay. Like uh, I'm, I'll get. I'm willing to give everyone a chance. Well, they're looking at Seth Rogen now. Rumor, rumor <laughs> to be looking. At. <laughs> That's see. Hilarious. At least with Jonah Hill, I could see if they're going with like the politician type penguin, how he could fit perfectly in that role. I'm gonna yeah. have a hard time taking Seth Rogen seriously as the penguin. 
Well, you know, what's, <laughs> what's interesting is Telltale Games did a Batman video game right before it shut down. And they had a very interesting take on the Penguin that was something different than anything I'd ever seen before. So I do think there are things that you can do with that character that um, oh, yeah. you know don't fit the typical mold. But uh, whether or not it would work in, in this movie, because I guess this movie, I, Robert Patterson came out earlier, I think yesterday in some interview, and, and he said that uh, the Batman that they're creating is not a moral character. Uh, he kind of kind of said that th- this this version of the Dark Knight is going to be very kind of gray matter, ambiguous, you know, crossing lines and stuff like that. And that kind of upset some of the Batman faithful. But at the same time, I can kind of see where they're going with it. Um, so it's just a question of whether or not this is going to be a good movie or not. So and, in other words, it's going to be more like Frank Miller's Batman kind of. Yeah, I guess. Um, maybe not like Batman, you know, he might not be, like, yeah, full on, but yeah, uh, it's, it's going to be dark. I think he's going to be messing up criminals left and right or something like that, but it might be one of those things where Batman starts off as just like a, a guy who beats up thugs and then morphs into a detective type thing. So uh, that might be what, what we're going to see from this movie. Plot details have been very uh, uh, lack, you know, lacking. So we don't know what the movie's about. We just know kind of who's going to be in it and that it's somewhat based off of the long Halloween, but I don't know how accurate that is. Anyway, guys, any more thoughts on Batman before we move on? I just want to know what everyone else thinks of Pattinson. Am I the only... Uh, no, you're not. I, I have got a lot of reservations about Pattinson, and a lot of it's mainly, and I admit, because he's just got that stigma. Yeah. You know, uh, that's stigma. a big problem. I mean, I liked Ben Affleck's Batman, though, and I liked Affleck anyway. So, I mean, I was one of the few of his supporters, and I was, I liked his version, and I guess from what Pattinson's saying, they're going more that, along that line because Affleck's the kind of guy that would kick the shit out of somebody and then somebody be like, you almost killed a guy. He's like, yeah, I almost killed him. He'll live. You know, that kind of a thing, you know, to where, you know, he beats well, I mean, a guy within yeah, inches of his life. Kind Affleck of thing. straight up murdered people. So. Yeah, Batfleck got to the point. Well, that's the thing. By the time you get to Batflex, it's Frank Miller Batman. That's why. He just no, don't he, give a shit anymore. Frank Miller's Batman didn't cross that line. Mm. I, I mean, Batman v Superman, Batfleck, he, he straight up murdered fools like, like just yeah well, i'm trying to i swear the batman was a little bit more frivolous in in one of the dark knight comics so there's a I lot mean, of i mean there was there was that moment where he could have killed the joker and well the joker kills himself that's the, the joker the kills himself that, because batman yeah. refused to cross that yeah line. that part yeah but then i think in the next one doesn't he kills i don't remember it's been a while since i read him uh, we i just know there's a lot of blood yeah, th- there is blood. Like Batman definitely will cripple people and put them in the hospital for the rest of their life. But uh, maybe as a kid, I thought they were dead. Because <laughs> yeah. I read that, like when I, I was mean, e- even read even when he when leads, like nine. even when he leads the gang army on Gotham City, they use like rubber bullets and. and oh, like, that's right. That's right. God, yeah. I th- I totally forgot that. Yeah. So. Isn't that uh, one of the most uh, consistent things about? Well, not maybe not one of the most. Not really. That he doesn't that he doesn't kill people, or is it's just that moral dilemma or something? It started. As, it, it's never been really a thing until like the last what 30, 40 years. Because in the initial, oh, he had he carried a gun and everything. In well, the original they, they needed an, an excuse to keep him from killing all the best yeah. guys. <laughs> Because <laughs> oh, I mean, before he used yeah, to just kill him willy nilly, like whatever. Because I think he killed the Joker within like three appearances of the Joker, but he was so popular that to bring him back, or within the first appearance, I can't remember which now. I know it was early on, but yeah, he used to kill people all the time back in the day. And then it became more of a thing he wouldn't use guns, but I don't know if he necessarily wouldn't kill people. Mm-hmm. And then by like the '60s or whatever, when it came to the Batman t- in the '50s, with all the crap with. Uh, Frederick Wortham in the in the comic book scare, I think that's when they really like cleaned everybody's act up. Oh, okay. Uh, I, bear in mind though, I mostly just go based off these cinematic appearances. Right. Well, the trail. cinematic appearances have always taken a lot of fucking just carte blanche with the character, especially Tim Burton's. Like he's killing people left and right in the Tim Burton movies, and nobody really stops to think of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they're also so cartoony that uh, it's kind of hard to take the Tim Burton one seriously. In retrospect, yes. I mean, I I appreciate them for their production value and just the balls they had at the time. And the fact that we didn't have a real Batman to that point, it felt like. I mean, yeah, Adam West Batman was cool, but let's face it, it was camp from the start. It was all too much. Oh, (laughs) yeah. 
But that's what was fun about it. That's what we loved about it. The camp. Right. And that's all that was doing was making fun of the fifties squeaky clean Batman anyway. Yeah. 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 The, uh, the Burton Batman, the 88 Batman was heavily influenced by the dark Knight. between the dark Knight and killing joke. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. I hope you got a lot out of it. And remember, if you want to support the channel, please check us out on the socials. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Matthew Kadish. You can also find our discussion group over on Facebook at eggfbgroup.com. That's eggfbgroup.com. Takes you right to our Facebook discussion group. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check out my books over on amazon.com. You can find them by going to kadishbooks.com. That's K-A-D-I-S-H books.com. And as always, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time we upload a new video. For more movie, TV, and entertainment news and analysis, this is Matthew Kadish. I'll catch you guys later.